じゃないよナナはお兄の死体の第一発見者になんかなりたくないからね What on earth was this sister of mine trying to say? Lately, she somehow started to give off the same kind of feeling as her mom. Which is to say, in conclusion, she's still obnoxious. Uh, she's getting more and more hysterical. If I pissed her off any more than this, she'd go out of control. Chill out, self. What's she saying? To buy a cell phone. Shut up, you trend chasing high school girl. You're much weaker than me when it comes to being informed. I've got the nut. Well, just a hint, Taku. You can get the nut on your phone, even if you're at school, so. Yeah, you might want to consider it. Granted, that was a given for, for contemporary high school or stuff cell phones, but I didn't own one. I didn't have any opportunities to use one. There's no one for me to call or text. I didn't want to spend money on something I wouldn't use. None of me returned to the figure to its shelf and peered at my face. Along with her words, she took her own cell phone out of her bag and hold it out to me, hold it out toward me, as if she were offering me a pillbox. It's kind of bright, and no, it's not adorable. Uh, a frog. Why would someone want that? What dangled down in the form of her cell phone strap was a bizarre mascot character. On top of that, it, it looked awful. As if an amateur had designed it. Dude, this wasn't anywhere near the level of lazily made or disturbing but cute. That's why I'm telling you to shut up, Trent Worshipper. What is this Geralt froggy crap? Logically speaking, no matter how you look at it, this kind of thing would never start a fad. How sad for her, failing to realize that she's being controlled by the media. Wait, they go by family members as well? That's kind of privacy invading. I know we certainly don't have anything like that over here, but I don't know, it's Japan. You never know. If anything, it would only get in the way. If I had a cell phone, mom would make sure to call me every single day. If I ignored her, she'd obviously set Nanami out as her assassin again. In short, it had turned into more of a hassle than it already was before, and I'd have to be even more careful. I couldn't put up with that. 
このバカ鬼もう帰るああそうしてくれ I opened the door so Nanami could go outside, but she didn't move. Shoulders shaking with anger, she burst out at me. Why did I have to see her off today? I'd never done so any of the other times she dropped by. For an instant, yesterday's event seemed about to, about to revive at the back of my mind, and I frantically shook my head, sending that gruesome spectacle flying away. Surely the new gen perpetrator wasn't so idle and curious as to attack a baby's kid like Nanami. Uh, I actually don't think he does care. Mommy was on the verge of tears. It looked like my words had seriously gotten her down. <laughs> Serve you're right. That's what you get for disturbing my peace. This is my quiet little form of revenge. Don't you like them apples? me with those parting lines, Nanami pushed me out of the way and hurtled out of her room. <sighs> that stormy period of time had finally come to an end. The room went silent as soon as Nanami left. It had to be like this after all. This was my base. I couldn't let anything go on here that wasn't to my taste. Seated in front of my PC, I moved the mouse minute minutely to make the Seraton screensaver on my monitor go away. I tried to drink the coke left on the table straight from the bottle, but it was empty. Ah, uh, that sucks. I had an indirect kiss with my little sister. Well, boo fucking who? It's an empty bottle. If Nanami were a little cuter, I might have been able to fap to this eroge esque situation, but the personality of hers only made me go flaccid. Dude, no. Just no. Seriously, no, Taku, no. I put the lid back on the coke bottle and threw it at the giant garbage can. Giant garbage bag, even, that sat in the corner of my room. Instead of going in the bag, it bounced off the wall and rolled under the bed. Meh. Whatever. Let's see. Better get back to immersing myself in ESO. I have to forget about reality and its aggravations ASAP. In truth though, I was only able to stay in Basilet for one day before my time there had to be interrupted. The moment I stepped outside early in the morning, my recovering nerves plummeted back into the worst shape imaginable. Why did I have to go to school? But I couldn't take the day off. Take even a single day off and abnormalities would emerge in the system imposed by my minimum attendance shift chart. Then I wouldn't be able to graduate. It was something I decided on myself, but I couldn't help griping about it. While passing through Shota's high, high class residential district, I came to an abrupt realization. For a while now, I'd been sensing someone's gaze. Unusually though, it wasn't God's gaze. My neck muscles weren't growing twitchy. As I rounded the corner, I used my eyes alone to look behind me without turning my head. For a second, I glimpsed a girl wearing a Sume uniform. Could it be the demon from the day before yesterday? I immediately lost my calm. My heart began beating wildly. A supreme tension controlled my movements, making me walk jerkily. 
The serene morning scenery metamorphosed, leaving me with the sense that everything around me was rejecting me. Birds chirped atop telephone wires, and I could faintly hear the relaxed background music of morning news programs playing in the houses I was passing. People really should turn turn down the volume then, because that doesn't sound good. In the midst of this vista that seemed like it couldn't possibly have less to do with a murder scene, I was on the verge of picturing myself dying hideously. No, get a grip. I hadn't clearly identified her face. Also, also, if she were a Sumai student, it would be natural for her to keep following after me. Her destination was the same after all. Okay then. At a spot from which I could go to my school simply by continuing straight ahead, I turned to the right instead. I was anxious about what might be behind me.